Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working primarily Monday to Friday in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified, and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. In today's beginner's guide series, we're gonna take a look at AWS step functions. We're gonna do a wee bit of practical now, then we're gonna go onto the console and actually build an AWS step function in a use case that AWS provide for us. So what is AWS step functions? Well, AWS step functions is a serverless orchestrator that lets us build dependencies between serverless functions, such as Lambda, and even other servers in AWS like DynamoDB. So there's a dependency tree where you can actually set up dependencies between Lambdas, or as I said, things like DynamoDB, where you can follow a flow and say, execute Lambda A, when complete, do B, then make a decision to go B or C, and then pass. So it's an orchestration tool that means in the AWS environment, we're not having to build another kind of app that basically runs the lambdas together. It allows us to bring a serverless architecture to the cloud for application flow. If we have an application and we need to carry out five things in a row, it's really the step function where we go to if it's completely serverless to join it together. But why use AWS step functions? I've already alluded to, there are other ways to build dependencies between lambdas from custom code to enterprise level schedulers. But what step functions do is just simplify the process. Being native AWS, there's, there's integration out of the box with the likes of AWS Lambda. There's a graphical user interface that represents the flow. It's easy to build the dependencies between the lambdas with a very simple JSON document. And then what we've done is lower that barrier to entry and we can really get going. But when do we use AWS step functions? This one's pretty obvious. It's when we need orchestration of serverless functions. It can't be used for anything else, so we might as well use it for what it's there for. And in today's lesson, we're really gonna get into the weeds um, a bit on the service itself. We're gonna build an AWS example that they provide the code for us. I'm gonna put the code in GitHub. I'm also gonna put a link to the AWS document that does it step by step as well. You can follow from either place, they're exactly the same. We're gonna create five Lambda functions and we're gonna build the flow down in a call center use case where a case ID will get opened in the call center. It will then flow through and if we can resolve it, we'll close out the ticket. And if we can't, we'll fail the job after escalating it. So this kind of flow is gonna be built in step functions where we're gonna build a dependency between the five lambdas and then hopefully get our outcome. We'll run it a few times so it goes down different sides of the tree and then use the user. Hopefully we'll understand a bit more about step functions by the end of today's lesson. So join me on the console and we'll get going. Okay, that's me logged into the AWS console. The first thing we wanna to go to is step functions. So if we just type in step functions at the top, you'll be greeted with the actual thing we need to go to, step functions. So let's click on step functions. Once on the step functions console, we wanna hit the little hamburger menu and we want to state machines. And then we want to create a state machine. We want to author with code snippets, leave it on standard. We want to generate with code snippet. Now, as usual, I've put all this information on GitHub. So everything we need is on my GitHub with a link in the description. Alternatively, I've also put a link into the steps from AWS because this is a direct AWS tutorial. Into my GitHub, and we want that machine state def. I'm just going to copy this entire file in the console because it's easy and we want to paste it in, and I want to format. It's okay that these are currently red, and that's because they don't exist. We'll come back to that in a little second, and we want to hit next. We need to give the state machine a name. We're going to call this call center state machine. As I explained in the intro, all these step functions are to coordinate tasks in a call center. So call center state machine. We want to create a new rule, and this lets step functions create a new rule based on your machine's definition and configuration details. That's fine. We'll turn off logging. We don't need that right now. Um, we want to create the state machine. Okay, the state machine has been successfully created. What we need to do now is go and set up our actual real Lambda functions in the background. So let's go to Lambda. And this is going to be a bit copy and pasty, but it's the quickest way to kind of get us going without having to constantly redo things. So first thing we need to do is create a function. And we're going to call this function open case function. So open case function. 
Uh, we're going to leave it as Node.js 14, and we just want to custom role as default. So create the function. Back on to my GitHub, and if we go up a folder directory, you'll see that there is an open case function.js file. We just want to copy that code. Once it's up and running, which will take a little second here, you want to click the index.js. You want to click the index.js file. Delete the code that's there, copy and paste the code in. And as you can see, what we're doing here is looking at a case ID. So this is the first one that opens the case. Case ID comes in, open the case message, send the message on. Click deploy, make sure you click deploy. And what we need to do now is repeat this another four times for four separate Lambda functions. I'm just going to open a new tab so we constantly have um, the old Lambda functions behind me on screen because we're going to need to go back and grab the ARNs and it's just easier to know what we're doing this way. So next we go create function again. This time it will be the assign case function. So assign case function. So we think about it, we've opened the case in a call center. Now we want to assign the case. Still in Node.js and create function. Then if we go back over to GitHub, we go to step functions, you'll see a sign case function at the top. And again, you just want to copy and paste this in. So you can see this time that we're basically assigning the case based on case ID. Again, this is a very contrived example. It's not really, you know, in depth. It's very basic code just to show it working. So case IDs came in, it's assigned to someone and we're ready to go. Make sure you click that deploy button or nothing will work. I'm going to open another tab on the Lambda function again. We want to create that function. This time it's called work on, oops, sorry, work on case function. Again, node.js and create function. Back over to, you guessed it, GitHub. And you guessed it, we have a work on case function. So this one is just working on the case. So it happens after, after it's been assigned. So again, this will load in a little second. Click on the index.js. Click on the index.js file and then paste in what we're actually copying across from GitHub there. So this one is again, the worked on case function. Deploy it. And again, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna open a link in a new tab. And you guessed it, we're gonna create a function. This one's called close case function. So the case has been closed, close case function. Again, node.js. And again, we want to copy and paste the code from GitHub. This time is closed case function, which is great. It's just a wee small one. And we copy and paste it in. And again, we click deploy. Always remember to click deploy. And then lastly, we want escalate case function. So again, I'm going to keep it simple by going right hand click. Open this up, create function. And this time again, S. Caliate case function. Node.js create function. Back over onto GitHub. Step functions at the highest directory. Escalate case function. Copy it. And once it's done creating, open that index.js file. Copy and paste it in and click deploy. Then we need to go back to step functions. Just be careful not to click off that until it's done deploying. So I'm just going to right hand click and open that up. A new tab, drag it to the far end for us. So it's the first thing we have. Okay, so back on the step function console on state machines, I have it clicked. We want to click edit. Now what we want to do, as you can see here, is we want to replace each one of these ARNs with the correct one corresponding to it. So open case, we'll go to open. And the ARN can be found. And the ARN can be found on the top right here with a copy. So just copy. Make sure you delete out this ARN correctly and copy and paste it in. Then you want your assign case function. So back into assign case function, copy, bring it across and paste it in. And again, just be so careful doing this because one wrong copy and paste and it won't work. This time we want work on case function. So work on case function, copy the ARN back into step function and paste. Then it does a little bit of a one or two depending if it worked out. Close case function, you guessed it into close case function and you want to copy and paste. 
And then again, lastly here, we want to escalate case functions. So that was the last one we worked on. And you want to copy step functions and paste. Oh, and I forgot the E. So again, just be super careful when doing this. Once done, you can see that all those red uh, X's have gone away because our functions actually exist. We want to save. That's fine, we want to save. Okay, once saved, next thing we want to do is go back out to call center state machine. We want to click on that ARN rule. Now this is the rule of our actual step function machine. And you can see that it doesn't have the access policy for everything that we actually need here. So what we want to do is edit the policy or alternatively attach a policy. So I'm just going to attach Lambda. And we want to attach the Lambda full access rule, cloud formation EC2, lambda full access and step functions. Yep. Yeah. So just going to attach that full access pull rule, attach a policy, and then you just want to double check that everything's there that it now needs. Um, show one more. Okay, back on to the console. Now this lambda has full permissions. We want to click start execution. In here, we want to delete out this little comment and we want to put an in input case ID and actually we want that in quotes and then colon double double zero zero one so this is input case ID double zero, double double zero one. And if we just quickly look at the open case function, you can see that it's expecting that event and then it's going to process that event for us. So then once that's done, we just want to click start execution. So that's it off and running. If we look at this really quickly, you can see that there's actually two flows to this diagram. One is where we can go down the left hand side and if it's successful, it will go green and end. The other one's work was done the right hand side and the case gets escalated so it actually fails. So depending on what side you're going down, you're going to get two different messages and that's deliberate. So the left hand side is success, the right hand side we escalate and fail. And if you run that several times, um, you'll get different outputs. So you can see here, here's one that failed on me earlier where we're going down the right hand side and then we're deliberately set to fail when the case gets escalated because we can't close the case automatically. So that's a bit of a, a contrived start on that workflow where you can see our lambda functions going down and if the case can be resolved, it goes left, goes green and ends. And if it can't, it gets escalated and it fails. The other thing I would add as well is just keep doing this and you'll see it going down the different sides of the diagram. So depending on how it decides to act in case resolved, because it's a random function, it'll either go down the left and go completely green that we saw before, or it'll go down the right and actually fail um, deliberately because the case needs escalated. So that's the, the introduction to step functions as a form of orchestration within AWS. I hope you found it useful. I'll make all this information for free as usual on my website, www.johnnychevers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.